we'd like to begin by learning a little bit more about you. If you could start with where you grew up and give us a little background into your early life. Okay. Well, I grew up, uh, I was born in Lawton, Oklahoma, at the Army base, Fort Sill Army base, and, and uh, but spent most of my time in Oklahoma City. <clears throat> um, I went to uh, elementary school, middle school, and uh, Southeast High School uh, in Oklahoma City. Graduated in 1955, came to OSU in 55, um, and graduated in 59. Um, didn't play uh, baseball all four years. I didn't have a scholarship. I walked on as, as a senior. And uh, I had earlier walked on the basketball team as a freshman. And uh, I made the team but didn't get to play a whole lot, and so I, I didn't really continue that. But uh, later on I decided i about ready to graduate. I'm going to try to, to hit the baseball field again and walked on at 59. Wow. I, uh, my degree was in accounting and I uh, uh, went to work for what became Exxon uh, about two days, three days after the College World Series and have lived in Houston now for 50 years. I'm not a, I'm not a Texan though, I'm still an Okie and um, I'm a Houstonian but not a Texan. <laughs> so. Well, what motivated you to come to Oklahoma State as opposed to the University of Oklahoma? Well, that's a good question. I, I grew up 15 minutes from OU and, and uh, throughout high school went to football games and basketball games there. And, uh, but I, I just kind of wanted to be a little bit further away from home and I, and I had followed OSU over the years. <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, visited both the campuses and loved, loved OSU and decided to come here. Now did you play uh, sports <clears throat> in high school? Well I played all of them in high school and, and um, basketball and baseball were my, were my best and uh, I always wanted to play in college and, uh, and I was a pretty good high school player but I, I just had no scholarship offers athletic scholarship offers so uh, but I love sports and uh, uh, I thought maybe I would have a chance to walk on and at least experience it and it was a great experience so I walked on the basketball team and was able to be around Mr. Iva for a year and and, uh, and that's a wonderful experience and learned a lot of basketball but it was obvious I wasn't going to play much and uh, so uh, uh, but but I felt that was a possibility for me, and that was another reason for coming here. First impression of Coach Iba? Well, just uh, all the impression. Oh, just it was just uh, a wonderful experience. <laughs> that's, that's what I can say. And we, uh, what was nice uh, about it uh, after the, the freshman at that time couldn't play on the varsity, so. Uh, we had our own freshman schedule, but we practiced quite a bit with the uh, with the varsity, and uh, so I was around and just experienced his style and technique, and and I learned a lot. I mean, I thought I knew a lot about basketball, but I had a good freshman coach. Sam Aubrey was our freshman coach at that time, and and a wonderful man, and um, treated me very well as a walk on. You know, most everybody was scholarship, and. Uh, he always treated me very, very well, and so uh, that whole experience was good, even though it was just a year. So you walk on to the baseball team your senior year. <clears throat> Were you in game shape when you decided to? Well, uh, what, what had happened? I, I baseball was my favorite sport, and so I continued to play in the summers and uh, <clears throat> while I was in college, and I and I played against a lot of college players. A lot of the OSU guys played in Cushing for a, Kerr McGee had a team up there called Kerr Mack and I played on a team in Oklahoma City and we would go up a lot during the summer and play Kerr Mack. And uh, I, you know I always felt I could compete with them but again there wasn't a good opportunity to get a chance to do that. But uh, after my junior year 
the OSU had shortstop and third baseman who were tremendous ball players signed pro contracts and those were the two positions I had played and I thought well let's go see if if he'll let me come out and uh, I walked into uh, <clears throat> Toby Green was our coach at the time and I uh, was able to get in and see him and, and uh, I was talking to somebody today and I was trying to think, what did, what did he tell me? Uh, he was a man of few words and he probably just said, oh, come on out, you know. <laughs> so so uh, that's what prompted it, I think, had uh, those two guys not left. As it turned out, we had a returning shortstop that had been off in the military and came back. Uh, Bob Andrew, who was the brother of our second baseman, Bruce Andrew, and then Jim Dobson uh, was a sophomore that, that uh, I had forgotten about. He was a third baseman, and I had played against him in high school because we both were from Oklahoma City. And uh, so, uh, as it turned out, the positions I thought I had a shot at, that wasn't going to work. And, uh, but uh, Coach moved me to the outfield, and, and I got to become the starting left fielder and, and um, played on a national championship team. I, it was exciting. So what was your batting average that year? Well, I was telling somebody today, my wife kind of smiled, like he'll have it, he'll have the average down to the last uh, thousands of a point, you know. But I did, I had a good year. I hit 337 and I, 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 uh, I think I was the second leading batting average uh, player on the team and I, and then uh, in the College World Series, I hit 429 and I made the all-tournament team and, and, uh, it was a dream. I, you know, whoever heard of a senior walking on and um, making the team and doing pretty well and you win the national championship. I used to kid the guys and say, who, let's see, what's the difference in this team this year? Oh yeah, it's that walk-on guy. That, <laughs> that made the difference right there. <clears throat> but it, it was an unbelievable experience. Well, tell me about the key team chemistry. Everybody seems so... Uh, friendly with each other. Yeah. Uh, it's just a nice cohesive group. Well, it was a it was a really good group. I mean, uh, it. Uh, I was telling my wife today that they were just genuine people, and we cared for each other. We were all, almost all of us were Oklahomans. We, um, uh, four of the four of my teammates I had played against in Oklahoma City, so I knew them from from the past. Some of the others. Uh, uh, played uh, against in the summers, and and it just was a good group of people. You know, there wasn't, there just wasn't any bad apples on the team, and uh, so it was a really cohesive group, and they pulled for each other. And uh, I felt particularly good because I was not one of them until I was a senior in terms of being on a team here at OSU, and and uh, they made me feel at home, and I was part of it. Tell me a little bit about the baseball facilities back then. Well, uh, I don't know a lot about what all they have now, but obviously it was pretty trimmed down back then. We played at the same ballpark. Uh, I don't. I think it was um, became Alley Reynolds Stadium later. I think in the '80s. And frankly, I don't remember what the field was called back then. But uh, it was in the same location. Same basic setup. Um, we didn't have batting cages like they have for batting practice. Uh, um, I don't know what they do and have in the way of training facilities, but back then we, we really didn't have any. I mean, we didn't lift weights, we didn't do any of those things. Uh, and um, it, it kind of dates me 50 years ago. Uh, but, the, but the basic layout was the same. And um, you know, I feel felt right at home over there today, going to going to the game. I mean, it's it's different. It's jazzed up a little more. Uh, somebody asked us, was the field that green back then? And the answer was no, it wasn't quite that green. Um, but uh, it was the best field I'd ever played on. When I played in high school, it was all dirt, you know, and and all of a sudden we had a grass infield and a grass outfield. So to me, it was like a Yankee Stadium playing. And locker rooms. 
Uh, well, we did. Uh, we had locker rooms over in Gallagher. Uh, at that time, it was just called Gallagher Hall. And uh, so we did have that. Um, not None of the equipment, batting gloves and things like that. Uh, I used to tell my kids uh, that, uh, I said, now, if I'd had batting gloves like you guys do, Maybe I would have hit 400. It would have felt so good. <laughs> you know? So, so we didn't have anything like that. We were talking today about the. Uh, I had on a jacket that that I got when uh, uh, Gary Ward was the coach here, and and they had a little get together at five years for. Uh, and some of our guys were here. I wasn't here, but they gave them all a cowboy jacket. Really, a, really a nice jacket. And we were joking about what we had in the way of jackets when we played then. And they were just kind of a old olive drab colored windbreaker with our name written on it with uh, with uh, like a marks a lot or something you know so, so things have changed a lot but I uh, we had a great time we had plenty of we had plenty of uh, equipment <laughs> now did you work while you were playing for the team and going to school and... well I, I uh, I did in a way. I, I was in a fraternity here, Lambda Chi Alpha, and uh, uh, so I worked in the kitchen of the fraternity house a couple of years, and then I was treasurer of fraternity once one year, and I got paid for doing. I got my room and board. The room and board was seventy-five dollars a month, uh, and uh, I got that paid for. And then I was president of the fraternity my senior year, and I got a little. Uh, step in there too, and so that was the extent of my job. Interestingly enough, though, they paid all of my room and board, so uh, for two or three years. And um, unlike now, or, or you know, the scholarship guys, I don't, I don't know that they have any kind of job they do now. But we'd go over and practice for two hours, and I'd go back to the fraternity house and do my thing there, and and I could do all of that. Things have changed so much. We we didn't do anything in the fall to speak of, and uh, um, uh, in the spring we would spend a little time down under the under the uh, in the field house down in the basement, and we had some batting cages down there. And, and uh, but uh, but no, I could go to class. I could go practice. Uh, we also, generally speaking, only played on weekends. We we played half the games they play today, and uh, we take we would take a trip to Houston uh, uh, before it got warm here and play Houston and Rice, and that was kind of our road trip. But everything else was weekends, except I think the OU series was beginning of the week. There weren't any weekday games typically like today, so you had more. You really had more time. So how would you travel to away games? Well, you, uh, <laughs> we didn't travel very uh, in a very sophisticated way. We we went in cars. You know, whoever whoever could drive, you know, would, we would drive. And uh, we probably uh, coaches would use to drive a car, and several of the players who had cars would drive. And and uh, um, we'd probably probably take about six cars or so, and and. Uh, but we didn't go on the road too much because we didn't play that many games. I think my senior year we went to Colorado and Nebraska and um, and uh, Houston and then we went to the World Series. We went to a playoff game before that in Peoria, all of my car. Hmm. Boy, times have changed. Oh, uh, they have changed, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned about the batting cages uh, in Gallagher Hall in the basement. Can mm -hmm. you kind of describe that setup for us now? Well, it was just all dirt down there, and, and uh, somebody today I was talking to said uh, they played football back. Some of our guys played football also, and they remember working out down there, and they were dodging baseballs while they while they worked out. <clears throat> and it was a pretty pretty good uh, activity down there. We we had the I don't know a couple of cages uh, that you could take batting practice in, and we take ground balls and play catch. Wrestlers would be down running and doing things to get in shape, and others would be down. It was just kind of a hodgepodge of people down there. Wow. <clears throat> so uh, you said Coach Green was a very soft-spoken man, man of few words. Right. Uh, what were your impressions of Coach Green? Well, you know, I can't help but uh, 
have fond memories of him because he let me let me come out and play, and uh, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, he always treated me well. Uh, he didn't say a lot when he said something. He was pretty upset with you, you know. <laughs> We were sharing thoughts today about uh, about things we heard from him. Some people said, I don't think he spoke two or three words to me the whole time. So he didn't say very much. But if there was something he didn't like, he, you knew about it. <laughs> and I had that experience one time, and I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> well, tell me about that, please. Well, it was, it was a, it was a uh, we were practicing, and, and we, we uh, had a, you know, a batting cage we put behind home plate. He would always stand right behind home plate, and our pitchers, you know, they they were getting their practice in too, throwing batting practice. And Dick Sorgel, who was one of our pitchers, uh, I was a left-handed hitter, and he kept throwing pitchers kind of on the inside corner of the plate, and they were they really would have been strikes, and I kept letting them go. I had a, I tended not to be able to pull the trigger on that left on that inside pitch, and. Uh, so I said, Dick, that's a good pitch. I should have been swinging at that. And there was silence behind the screen. And he, it happened again. I said it one more time. Still silence. It happened a third time, and I said it again. <laughs> and Toby hollered out, stop! If that's such a, and I won't say the words, that good a pitch, why don't you stand up there and swing at one of them? Uh, and he screamed it at me, you know. <laughs> And, and it was the most, it was an experience that I, I won't forget for this reason. Uh, he did that, and there was something it did to me. My adrenaline started pumping or something, and I, I was not known as a power hitter. And uh, the next pitch, over the right field fence. Next pitch, off the right center field fence. That's the only time in my whole career I hit the ball for any distance. I was a single hitter, you know, but I, I will never forget that, that all of a sudden I had this newfound power hmm. <laughs> because Toby hollered at me, you know. But, I, he, but he was, uh, he, he was, uh, just didn't say a whole lot and uh, he made a speech after, a short speech, of course, because he was a man a few words after the World Series to the, to the crowd and and I uh, said, this team has made an old man very proud. And uh, he had told us one other time that he thought his 55 team, I think it was, should have done it, should have made it, didn't make it. And, and we weren't predicted necessarily to do that well. We, our starting lineup, we had great pitchers. You know, we had uh, Joel Horland, Don Sorgel, and uh, Roy Peterson. Uh, two of which were seniors, so it was their last year, and Dick was a junior. But our catcher was a sophomore, first baseman a sophomore, second baseman a sophomore, third baseman a sophomore, shortstop was a, a junior. I played left field and had never played college ball. Uh, ben Bancroft played center field uh, and told me today, I asked him if he had played much as a, as a he was a junior, if he played much as a sophomore, and he said, I. I came to bat 16 times is all, so he didn't play much. And then Tim Green played right field, same thing. So we didn't have a team that had a lot of ex college experience. And, uh, but we had, we had really good pitching and then things just came together. And uh, we, were, we were ranked uh, number two in the country going in to the, to the playoffs. And uh, Southern Cal was number one and right at the time the playoffs were about to start, they were found to have an, an ineligible player, and the, <coughs> they were had to forfeit a lot of games, and uh, could not represent the West. Uh, 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 Fresno State ended up representing, uh, and then at the end of the season, we were ranked number one. But uh, so we came from not being expected to do that much to to there. At the start of that season, did you guys think you could compete for a national title? Well, I certainly had no idea. I mean, I, I uh, was new on the block, <laughs> new kid on the block. And I, I think uh, I really believe the uh, pitching staff <clears throat> knew what they were capable of. They were very, very, very good. And uh, uh, 
so I, they probably had quite a bit of confidence that, that we could do well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but the rest of us were all kind of new. And uh, you really didn't know back in those days, you really didn't know a lot about your competition. You know, today they'll ha they have scouting reports. Uh, we, we didn't really know a lot about them. And so it was kind of hard to, to say. We went to Houston for the first four games of the year, and Rice beat us, and Rice really didn't have that good a ball club. And, and uh, so you just you couldn't really tell. But things just came together. And, uh, and we played, uh, we had good pitching and good defense and good timely hitting. You know. Well, tell me about some of the players you recall that, that made outstanding contributions uh, during the season or, or in other ways that just really stand out in your mind. Well, uh, I mean, f first of all, the pitchers all stand out. Uh, in fact, uh, Joel Horland, who was one, and uh, Joe's interviewing now, but Joel uh, made all, it was an All-American. He had such a good year, he was voted to the All-American team, went into and played Major League Baseball for 13 years, two World Series teams and an All-Star team. He was so he he was just excellent. He uh, he was as smooth as silk. He just knew how to pitch. Roy Peterson was very aggressive and very confident, and uh, he and then Dick, all of the pitchers stand out. In fact, Dick had never, uh, Dick played in Ca at Capitol Hill High School, played all the sports at OSU. He was a three-sport player for three years and a starter all three years. And he had never lost a game as a pitcher from, I think, his junior year in high school all the way up to uh, uh, the College World Series and lost his first game in the College World, World Series that he had ever lost as a pitcher. So those all stood out. And then it, it, we had two power hitters and Jim Dobson and Ben Bancroft who, who uh, could win a ball game for you with, you know, with a home run. Uh, we had excellent defense at first base and second base. Uh, all, all the defense was good, but the second baseman, Bruce Andrew, was superior as was the first baseman and uh, it's hard to it's hard to say I mean the the people that got the honors ultimately were people like Joel Horland was an All-American Ben was an All-American Jim Dobson was voted the most valuable player of the College World Series um, and uh, so those can't help us stand out but it was just a, a really good bunch uh, and uh, a lot of a lot of talent any favorite memories during the regular season that just stand out for you as a player? Uh, well, I, I think uh, probably my own experience. Uh, are you talking about something mm -hmm. I was involved yes. in, or um, I, I can remember two experiences that jump out right away. Again, I walked on so. Um, that was in itself was kind of unusual and we had just gone to Colorado and uh, played a three game series and came back and uh, the uh, daily, the o Ocali we call it, I don't know if they still call it that, uh, had this story uh, um, about a sweep in the series. Uh, McElvoy leads a team hitting 395, and I looked at that and I said, "My, I, what's happening here? I, this can't be happening to me like this." And uh, and then I went into a slump. <laughs> so so uh, reality set in, and I and I had, but I remembered at that point, and um, it helped that the editor of the Ocali was a fraternity brother of mine. <laughs> so so uh, from from a, kind of a general experience. That hit me, and I thought, I can't believe that I'm getting to do this and and doing fairly well. And then in the College World Series, uh, um, you know, one particular thing that stands out: we were in the finals, and and Bruce Andrew, our second baseman, had, had a had had a bad series hitting. He was a good hitter and just got in a slump during the series. But he was such a good defensive player that he made the all-tournament team. And uh, we were uh, 
tied going into the, I think, into the into the ninth inning, and uh, I believe it, I'm pretty sure it was the ninth. And um, somebody got on, and Bruce hit a triple and tied it up. And they changed pitchers, and they brought a left-handed pitcher in. Well, I was a left-handed hitter, and I was not a very good hitter off left-handed pitching, and so. Uh, coach came out of the dugout. I started walking back, figured that was it for me. And he said, uh, he said, I want you to stay in. And uh, it was a pretty good bunter. And I, and he said, I want you to uh, stay in. And on the second pitch, we're going to squeeze. We're going to squeeze that runner in from third. And uh, so uh, I thought, well, I think I, I, that's not, I could I could bunt off left hander. I just couldn't hit a left hander very good. And um, and so we were able to able to to uh, exercise the squeeze play. He scored, and it gave us a five a two run lead. So we got a little bit of cushion, and then we held him in the Dick pitched the ninth, and we held him. So it wasn't a base hit; it was just a bunt at the right time. Uh, I, I was, uh, uh, as I said, not good against left hand pitcher, and I later moved to Houston when I graduated and was in the church I belonged to, I spotted uh, a fellow that had pitched for the University of Houston and he was a left-hander. And when we played them, he just wore me out. I mean, I think that's when the coach said, this kid, this McAvoy kid is not going to do too well against left-handers. And I saw him in church and I walked up and introduced myself and I said, you don't know me, but his name is Charlie Peepers, but I said, Charlie, you ruined my career in baseball, <laughs> striking me out three times against the University of Houston. So uh, those are a couple of the things I, I remember. Hmm. And a great experience. Well, I got I got to say one more uh, against OU. We uh, we had the bases loaded and two outs, and I was at the plate, and I hit a real high kind of a hop fly but it was into short right center field and uh, it was two out and the count was 3-2 so all the runners were moving on the pitch and uh, they uh, they all scored on my little blue pop up into into the right center field and later um, Toby Green was being interviewed before we went into the playoffs and he was saying we've had a lot of we've, we've played good ball we've had some breaks he said uh, he said, this kid I picked up off the intramural field hit this, got this banjo hit against OU and scored three runs. So he said, you know things are going right when that, when that happens. So, so I, I, I can't forget that one. And against our ri hated rival anyway. I, I read the whole intramural field before coming down here today, and I'm like, surely he wasn't just playing I am baseball, you know, before getting no, walking on to the team. No, no. <laughs> I played intramural stuff here, but not baseball. And but I played baseball in the summer, and and uh, it's it's still uh, it's still like a dream to me that it happened the way it did. Back then, was the College World Series a, a big deal like it is today? Uh, it 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 was in Omaha for sure. Uh, nowhere near the crowds as they have today, but. We were treated like kings. I mean, it was uh, just like I'm sure they do today. We we had a sponsor there. Uh, it was the Junior Chamber of Commerce. They would bring us out if we didn't have a game one evening. A couple of times they brought us out for cookouts, and and uh, we had a parade through downtown Omaha before the series started, and uh, we just got really treated well. And I and I know it's the same way now. But the difference is the crowds. We we played uh, in the same place they play now, but they it's much enlarged, and they'll have twenty five or six or seven thousand at a lot of the games, and we only had I, th I think forty two hundred at the in the finals. But it was a smaller park, and you still felt like a big crowd was there. And uh, you know we uh, we uh, would have little kids come down and want an autograph, and you know that sort of thing. We. Th you know, we had we'd never been through that sort of thing before, but it was really a wonderful experience, and I th just like it is today. Yeah, I think it was only about the. Uh, it it, age, it really makes me feel realize how old I am because it was only I think about the maybe the 14th or 15th World Series that 
Uh, and in fact, the former President Bush, senior, played in for Yale in the College World Series, I think the very first one, if I'm not mistaken. And we weren't too far down, down the road. Well, it seems like it was just a great atmosphere to play there. Oh, yeah. Uh, were there a lot of o OSU fans in attendance? Uh, not too many. Uh, we, we had, uh, we had uh, some people that lived up in that area that were there, but not like it would be today, uh, I'm sure. Um, and um, so there, there's a lot more, a lot more pizzazz around it today than there was back then. Uh, but uh, but we had some, and then and then the Omaha, most of the fans were Omaha people, and they would tend to begin to to favor one team or the other, uh, you know. So we felt we had good support. You mentioned a couple of uh, special moments from both the regular season and and the playoffs. Uh, do you have any special memories of the College World Series that that just really stand out in your mind? Oh, I, yeah, one for sure. Uh, and I talked to Lou Wade. Uh, who, did you talk to Lou Wade uh, today? I, I, he was leaving when I came in. But Lou, uh, we were playing Penn State, and we we had already lost one game in the World Series to Arizona, and so we were in the losers bracket, had to come back up, and we'd already beaten Penn State once, but they came were coming up also, and they were ahead of us three to one. And I think I've got this story straight in my memory. Uh, got, I'm almost sure it was in the ninth inning. We were behind three to one. Lou came up and pinch hit and uh, and got a base hit to right field. And I don't remember this exactly who was coming up next, but we ended up <coughs> scoring a run. We were behind by by uh, we were behind by two runs. We scored a run and we were they closed the gap three to two and two outs and I can't remember now who hit it but somebody hit a ground ball to the third baseman it should have been the third out and we're out of the World Series and would have lost three to two he bobbled the ball made a bad throw to first and we had two runs score and we won four to three and then we went ahead and won it all so I gotta say that that was probably a uh, one of the big things that I remember because we were just on the verge of being out. <laughs> and how many games did you play in? I, I think we played five. Uh, we, uh, we we played two and one and I mean we, we won our first two. Arizona won their first two. We had to play each other in the winner's bracket. They won. We lost. That was three games. We had to go down and and uh, no I think we played six because I think we had to go down and win two uh, to finally get back uh, to play Arizona in the finals. And were you on the roster for all the games? Uh, yeah, well, I was on the roster. I didn't play in one of the games with the left-hander throw. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, that was probably a smart coaching move. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> I used to I tell people all the time I, I love to play golf, and I said there's only one other thing harder to do than play golf, and that's to hit a left-hander's curveball. <laughs> so tell me about that championship game against Arizona. Well, uh, uh, they they we had they had beaten us the first time, but a real close game. Uh, I think it was four to three, and um, their pitcher for that game was one of their best pitchers. But I, I felt he was not that difficult to. Figure out. I mean, he he didn't he threw pretty hard, but not real hard. The 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 person that threw against us in the finals really really could bring it. I mean, he could really bring it. And uh, uh, I hit second in the lineup, and he struck me out the first time. And I I remember coming back to the dugout saying I hardly saw those pitches. I mean, he was really throwing hard. And uh, so I remember that real clearly. And um, uh, generally, I could get around on the ball pretty good and pull it. I, I didn't swing late that much, but I only I got one hit in that game, and it was a gr uh, ground ball right down the third baseline. So I swung pretty late, and I, I still don't know for sure how I hit him. And uh, but fortunately, uh, uh, we all were having trouble with him. And uh, but we scr uh, scratched around and picked up a run here and there, and then 
and then uh, he was replaced um, somewhere along the line. I think uh, was uh, relieved, uh, and and um, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, Jim Dobson hit a two-run homer and got us back in the game. But it was tied going into the to the end, so it was a real close, tight game all the, all the way. And they had they had a really good ball club, and they they played about twice as many games as we did. Uh, Arizona and California teams tended to play a lot, and uh, it was just a well pitched game. And the the other really important thing about that final game. We, because we didn't play a lot of games, our three main pitchers, starting pitchers, nearly pitched complete games nearly every game. So our, our other pitchers really didn't get to pitch a lot. But in the College World Series, you're playing uh, just about every day, and you've got to have a little more depth than that. And so we ended up starting... Uh, a left-handed pitcher named Toby, Toby Bensinger, who I played against in high school. He was from Midwest City, and uh, he had not pitched probably in three months. I mean, he had stayed in shape, and he had thrown batting practice, but because our starters tended to go all the way and we didn't play that many games, he didn't get to pitch. And he pitched a, about just short of four innings and really did a great job. He deserved so much credit that game and held kind of held them and that it was 3-3 and, and and then Dick Sorville came in and as I mentioned earlier he had lost first game in his career against Arizona and he got credit for the win in the second game but that that is a is a real key part of that final that Toby Bensinger came in and and did so well after not having pitched a whole lot and uh, uh, other than that, it was just a well played, well played game all the way around. I think we had. I'm biased, obviously, <laughs> but but uh, I really, I really do think we had a really fine ball club. In fact, uh, that year uh, we lost two seniors pitchers, and uh, I was a senior, and Tim Green was a senior. But we had all these sophomores, and we had a lot of freshmen, and they they went real far in the World Series the next two years, and uh, uh, so it was a good nucleus that they had, you know, come, kept coming back, and just just a good bunch of guys in a good ball club. But it was an exciting game, for sure. And all tournament team honors for you. I'm sorry. All tournament team honors for I, you. I got named to the all tournament team. I uh, I had no idea. I was we were walking off the field, and uh, Bob Dellinger, who was the sports editor of the the Daily Oklahoman in Oklahoma City, uh, came up, put his arm around me, and he said, "I want to show you something here. You got named to the all tournament team." So it just kind of it was a great way to finish. You know my uh, baseball career. I'd always wanted to play pro ball, and um, but the scouts I think really felt I didn't have that potential. I had no power, no speed, and no arm. You know, <laughs> I didn't have any of the things they were looking for. Uh, but uh, to get that, to get that uh, honor was, you know, I always have that uh, with me, and it was such a shock, you know, to have it happen. We had four, we had I think we had four people named to the all tournament team, and and Jim Dobson was the most valuable player, uh, also. So, do you remember the uh, the trophy presentation in Omaha? Uh, yeah, I remember a little bit about it. It was pretty pretty low key. Uh, uh, it, it reminded me my wife and I went through the Heritage uh, Hall Muse uh, Museum. Mm -hmm. That's the right name. And uh, today, and looking at the, the baseball section, and, and uh, you know, it was not a dominating uh, trophy or anything, but uh, but it was a nice presentation, and uh, uh, and uh, it was great to, to win it. Obviously, for all of us, but for the coach who you know was was older and retired just a few years after that, and. Uh, um, but it was a pretty pretty low key kind of kind of, of uh, presentation. Any other members of the coaching staff that just stand out in your mind? Uh, 
Well, uh, to, uh, Toby Green was the, the head coach. Uh, he, he didn't do as much hands-on with, with a lot of us. I think he did more of that with the pitchers. Uh, but uh, 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 Freddie Babb, who had played before, uh, helped some uh, some of the coaching and uh, and uh, but I think if you compare that time to now, it, from a coaching standpoint, it's quite different because you do have uh, I'm sure OSU now has a pitching coach and probably a hitting coach and I don't know how many coaches they have. Um, we really didn't have that many coaches, you know. It it uh, it uh, was the kind of thing that uh, we sort of brought with us what we had, and and uh, but you'd get some pointers uh, along the way, and I I got help from Freddie in the outfield because I'd never played the outfield before, and and uh, so uh, you know that that was that was a plus, but there was more uh, there it was just much more. Uh, Low key than today, for sure. I, my youngest son played at uh, Bel Air High School in Houston, and and it was a, they it was a baseball school. They they sports the other sports weren't that good, but baseball was top notch. And they spent more time practicing, and they played many more games than we ever did. And I remember talking to the head coach one day, and I said, uh, Ray. Uh, um, I played in, in a major college baseball program, and I didn't spend half the time you you got spent, and so that gives you kind of a compare. But that's the way it is in all the sports now. Uh, a lot more hands-on coaching, a lot more training, a lot more you know weightlifting and all of that. And uh, we just sort of played. <laughs> you know? What would you do if you got injured? Well, we had a uh, Byron Bird was our trainer, and. Uh, uh, so he was he was there for all the all the games and uh, helped us with things like that. Uh, but uh, uh, I never had to have any special special uh, training things, you know. It, it is funny that we talk about it here that it is it was more we got out and played, and uh, yet we had a really really good team. Well, have you stayed in touch with your teammates over the years? Well, not not uh, uh, often. <clears throat> uh, I haven't been up in this area. I'm in Houston, so <clears throat> I don't naturally see everybody. But we we've gotten together. Uh, we got together at ten years, and um, at, in our fortieth year, we were inducted into the as a team into the Hall of Honor, Athletic Hall of Honor. So we had a uh, we were here for that. Uh, and then, of course, now the 50th uh, uh, year, so uh, that's been primarily it. I sometimes, when I've come up, when I still had family uh, here, my mother and dad, I'd, I'd uh, uh, give Dick Sorgel a call and, and uh, kind of reminisce a little bit. But uh, it hasn't been an ongoing thing because we're not up here that much for sporting events and that sort of thing. How special is this reunion for you this weekend? Oh, very, very much, very special. Uh, it, uh, the whole experience was so good, and and uh, and we were a close knit group, and it it's uh, just been a. I've really been looking forward to it. In fact, I didn't know it was going to happen, and I had uh, I wanted to organize a fifty year celebration if if there wasn't going to be anything and I had called and I ended up talking to Jason uh, and uh, uh, the the uh, posse club and and uh, he told me that something was being planned and I knew that a couple of months ago and and uh, I've really been looking forward to it the whole time it's been a great and it's been well organized and we've had plenty of time to reminisce and share stories and and uh, it's just been really special. Well in your opinion how has college baseball changed over the years? Well uh, you know when I watch the games and I, I'll go to college games in Houston quite a bit and uh, and if OSU's down there I always always go 
I don't think it's changed all that much. Uh, the big change in college baseball is the aluminum bat because we played with a wooden bat, and uh, um, which which makes I think the power hitting that a couple of these guys did even more special with the wooden bat. Uh, but uh, so the aluminum bats made a I think a big difference. I think they're. Um, uh, I think there's more uh, hitting uh, and probably more better batting averages, more runs scored. I mean, we had an awful lot of low scoring games. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a few that weren't, but most of them were pretty low scoring. So I think that's changed. Um, probably more than anything else. But baseball is a game to me that doesn't change all that much. And uh, I was at a, I, when OSU played in. Uh, a regional tournament in Austin. It's probably been 10, 12, 15 years ago. Um, and I went up for it and uh, Bill Platt, I don't know if you're familiar with, with him, but Bill Platt was our radio, he was a radio announcer, a radio guy, a sports guy at KSPI in Stillwater. And he would travel to our games and broadcast the games back. And uh, so he was there and I went up and I said, Bill, let me ask you something now. That, the game doesn't look like it's changed that much to me. And uh, I said, now give me your totally unbiased opinion. Could we compete with these guys today? He said, oh yeah, you could compete. So it made my day. <laughs> so I don't really think it's changed that much. Uh, but except for the equipment's different, uh, the bats anyway. Uh, and, uh, and probably they're, you know, they do a lot more physical uh, training things than we did. Well, you could, could you share with us uh, what happened after graduation? What did you go on to do? Well, I left. Uh, uh, we we came back from Omaha and, and uh, in our cars, <laughs> and we had uh, they had announced that we'd be coming back. So we had a lot of people here, and it was kind of special driving in. I had I had uh, had uh, had gotten married a week or so before that, before the World Series. We had a little break between the end of school. And, and um, so we uh, went, I went back to Oklahoma City and in two days I was, we had everything we owned in a car driving off to Houston. And I'd gone to work for a company there, Humble Oil and Refining Company, which later became Exxon. And uh, uh, so my experience since then is being in Houston, uh, working there, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, I remarried about nine years ago, and we have six children between us and a bunch of grandchildren. So, and some of the grandchildren are getting up. I have one playing high school baseball, and, and uh, another one in track, and so we're we're doing some of those kind of things. But I was with uh, Exxon for about 30 years, and I retired early and wanted to do other things. I wanted to have more flexibility in my life, and. It turned out not quite that way because I started a business with another guy and, and we worked harder than ever probably. But I still, we did a lot of work for Exxon and um, I still do some consulting there. Um, I, I'm going to say two or three days a week. My wife will say, ah, more like five days a week. But I, I it kind of comes and goes. And so my, uh, my life has been a career with in the oil and gas industry and I would help coach kid teams, you know, when my kids came along and always followed OSU sports. I mean, I really do bleed orange, as my wife would say. As I tell my UT uh, friends, I, I bleed bright orange, not that dull burnt orange, uh, and uh, really follow uh, the team, but not in person a lot, because we haven't been up that up here that much, but if they're playing down in our part of the country, uh, I'll usually go to the games and uh, and and still just love to follow the follow the athletics up here so that's that's been uh, it I've, I've uh, had a wonderful life and uh, <clears throat> uh, and this experience is clearly one of my all-time favorites I, when I retired from Exxon I uh, had a good friend from OU that was working there too he was a, one of the one of the assistant controllers. And I was the manager of the information systems group, and we did a lot of things together. Went to lunch together a lot, and all that. He uh, wrote a letter in my retirement book, you know. And 
he said, I, I really don't know what we're going to do without you here uh, because we'll, we're going to miss those tales of exploits, how you led OSU single-handedly to the national championship. <laughs> so I talked about it a lot, I guess, but uh, it, it was a, such a wonderful experience and uh, uh, that I'll certainly never forget. Um, in fact, I've got a I've got a scrapbook at home that ha I've got some of the games, some of the articles. I've got a lot of the f final stuff, and I my uh, uh, goal is to see if I can find all of the old write-ups from my senior year and try to put together something that I could reproduce, you know, for for the the team or or maybe it could be used up here. Uh, I'm just missing a lot of games, so I want to do that. Well, we, we spoke about kind of got a gl glimpse into your your time with a, your with your time at OSU and serving as a walk on during the '59 season. And uh, is there anything else that you would like to mention that that we have not spoken about today? Well, I, I don't uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, my whole experience here was good. I I love going to school here and and. Uh, um, I think from the uh, baseball standpoint, we've probably, we probably uh, uh, covered uh, the uh, key experiences that, that, that I remember uh, from that time. Um, so I'm, I'm probably drained of that uh, any more tidbits. Well, we appreciate you spending your time with us this afternoon, and, and welcome back to campus and enjoy the rest of your reunion. Thank you very much. Thank I've you. enjoyed doing it.